Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Bolag, and alongside my mentor, Javier Rubio Velasquez, I've been working on risk maps and other tools to bring safety to communities surrounding the Volcan de Fuego in Guatemala. So the southern coast of Guatemala is part of this uh, area called the Middle America Trench, which is part of this larger area known as the Ring of Fire. And the Ring of Fire is home to many earthquakes and volcanoes due to the borders of the sliding tectonic plates. Um, and one of these volcanoes actually had some eruptions recently. And that's the Volcan de Fuego. So their eruptions began on June 3rd, killing many people. According to these official statistics, there is 159 <coughs> confirmed dead and 265 still missing. And in an eruption like this, uh, we see this smoke above the volcano. And some of that smoke is actually pyroclastic flow. And when the eruption settles down, the pyroclastic material is resting on the ground. But unfortunately, the danger is not over. And to understand this, we have to look at the hazards associated with volcanoes. So in these infographics, we see some of the more obvious instant hazards, such as lava, explosions, volcanic gases. But we also see something called lahars. And what are these lahars? Lahars are a type of violent mud flow or landslide. Those of us who are local remember the landslides that happened in Montecito earlier this year. And lahars occur after this ash, this pyroclastic material, is resting on the ground, and then rain comes to mixes with it and forms these dangerous slides. So what is our role in all this? Well, we want to ask two main questions. Firstly, we want to ask what areas are in danger. And to illustrate those results, um, we've put together risk maps that show this. And secondly, we want to ask what can be done to alleviate the risk and actually help the people, bring them to safety. And within this second question, firstly, we wanted to ask what could we do within the scope of this project to help? And then what can they do? What can we recommend groups in Guatemala to do? And there's a couple of reasons why this is important. Firstly, there's kind of an obvious importance, which is that we're potentially saving lives in the immediate future. And secondly, there's a more broad long-term importance, which is that by publishing our process as a research project, we can serve as a guide or a case study for other scientists who are helping with hazard reduction in similar situations in other parts of the world. And so our process had a couple of main components. One of them was making contact. So we tried to make contact with several NGOs as well as governmental agencies within Guatemala. And the main governmental agency we exchanged a lot of information with was CONRED, or the National Coordination for Disaster Reduction. And we ended up sending them videos that we put together, which were simple, informative videos showing the danger of eruptions and then lahars. And ideally, if they wanted to, they could show these videos to people in the communities to help them be informed. And we also sent them a website that we created, which um, had information about the lahars as well as our final risk maps. And the other main part of our process was using Google Earth. So we had to find the areas of risk and then put together the risk maps. And the first part of this was putting together the paths that we think the lahars would take in the event of rain. And so first, we had to look at where the ash is, where the pyroclastic material is. And then we had to find where the creek paths were, since they're of lower elevation. And then we had to create these elevation profiles, as seen here which show the various heights at any point along the line. And so using all of this data, we put together the lahar paths. And after this, we found some choke points where the lahars could be squeezed into another direction, or some critical points, which are just points for whatever reason importance. So maybe at a certain critical point, the lahar could either go within its creek path or venture off somewhere else. Or maybe at a certain critical point, measures can be taken to make the lahar go the direction we want it to go, and things like that. And finally, we shaded the populated areas that were in danger. And so here we have one of, our, uh, one of the views of our risk maps. You can see the pyroclastic material around the top of the volcano, as well as in orange and red, the lahar paths going all the way from the top down to the coast. And we also see this thicker red, which um, are the areas where the lahar paths intersect the populated communities. And then finally, um, from the yellow pins, we see the critical points. And so one of the main cities that's in a lot of risk is Esquintla. Esquintla has about 68,000 people. And here we can see two lahar paths, one in orange and one in red. 
the Orange Lahar path would be on the main creek path and wouldn't intersect any people and would go straight to the coast. However, at this critical point, which is a bridge, the Lahar could possibly venture off and head straight towards the community. And so what we recommend to do at this critical point is that they actually dig or mine underneath the bridge so that the Lahar has more room and would be more likely to stay within this orange path. And we also um, looked at what could be done more generally. So firstly, communities need to be informed. They need to be informed about the areas of danger by seeing our risk maps, and they need to be informed about how to be safe. And they also should be educated more generally about the basic science of the volcanoes and the lahars that they live so close to. And secondly, there needs to be a, an organized emergency action plan, which would include evacuation routes so the people actually know where to go in the event of something like this. And then finally, safety infrastructure should be built. And this could include, for example, sensors, which would be around the top of the volcanoes and sense when the lahars are coming, or sensors sensing when the heavy rain is coming. And these would trigger alert systems that would alert the communities of this. And we could also work with weather forecast groups who would predict before the heavy rain comes and trigger the alert systems. And as we look back uh, on our project, we reflect on what future possibilities could be. So these could be things that Javier and I could decide to do in the future if we continue this, or anyone else could do. And the main thing that we would look at was we'd go back to these what could be done initiatives, and we'd research them much more in depth. And to do this, uh, we'd probably have to actually go to Guatemala, go to the areas around the Volcan de Fuego, to work out the technicalities of the safety infrastructure, where to put it, how to build it, as well as the evacuation routes. And if we did this, we'd also be able to directly educate the people about this. And another direction that one could take in future research would be looking into a program for people who are displaced, either by future lahars or by the eruptions that already happened. And finally, I'd like to thank my mentor, Javier Rubio Velasquez, Dr. Lena Kim and Ross Melser of the Research Mentorship Program, two UCSB students who helped with us, Jesse Vasquez and Brian Cortez, our contact from the Guatemalan Conred, Cesar Suarez, and lastly, my family. Thank you. <laughs>